Hello and welcome back to another DF Direct. Yes, I'm here again, but this time I'm not joined by my friend Audie. I'm joined by my colleague Alex. Woohoo, John! Who's I'm, here in town? Yeah, in Frankfurt, and I'm going to be eating not turkey dinner, but something very similar to that today at That's some right. point. And I'm very excited. Of course, who, can, yeah. who loves Thanksgiving? Everyone exactly. Should. That's what we're doing. Well, you know. <laughs> so today I thought we would, it, you know, why he's here, I thought we should film something because I shared something with you. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like a secret that will ruin everything for you because as soon as you see it, you can't go back almost. I basically played for a couple hours modern, retro, semi-modern games on a CRT and an amazing CRT, yeah, of and course. Since I can't shut up about the CRT, <laughs> like half the things I tweet about is that I'm yeah. obsessed with it. Um, uh, because it's fun to talk about. Yeah. But I was like, of course, when you come to the house, we had to talk about it. Yeah. And well, I mean, I set it up and I let you play a lot of games and I thought we would, you know, dig back into this, but I wanted to hear your perspective on it because you're primarily a PC gamer yeah. uh, and, all your life. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously in the last decade or more, PCs yeah. have moved primarily to flat panels. And, and I feel, I lament this. I, I do lament it now too. Uh, I have been playing, you know, a couple hours just yesterday on a really good CRT. Uh, and I, my, my kind of life has been like, up until 2007, 2008, I was primarily gaming on CRT monitors, of course. That's what was right. available. Then the quality shifted for, you know, like uh, resolution and aspect ratio. I switched over to an LCD and I remember back then even kind of I was used to higher refresh rates slightly for at lower resolution yep. uh, and I switched over to an LCD that was like 1680 by 1050 uh, 16 by 10 monitor at that point in time which is a good resolution which was okay for the time obviously mm -hmm. the GPUs were having a little trouble pushing that out uh, now going back to something that is higher res than that uh, John's one full monitor here but with the advantages of a CRT uh, I, I don't understand actually why we kind of made the transition in terms of like from an enthusiast perspective now that I'm thinking about it because yeah, so, uh, I mean obviously they're not really manufactured anymore yeah. they're heavy you know they're not as large as LCDs you know, there's a lot of flaws and honestly for desktop use I do think LCDs yeah, is better like, but for pure gaming for the enthusiast side of things like just like thinking about it right now I would love to have an LCD or some sort of fat panel for all my you know video editing usage and things like that but then I could just turn to my right and have a smaller CRT that I just look at and exactly. game on because exactly. I mean there's just so many things to talk about why I actually enjoyed the experience so much one of them was actually the like the rapid changing of resolution and uh, frequency of the screen and also having that picture that's put out after changing frequency and resolution still looking good. I'm so used to of any single frame that is below my actual fixed panel resolution and frequency to be one problematic looking, gossed, blurried, yeah. all these things. And every single resolution we tried out on your CRT I mean, sure, they had lower fidelity, of course, because they were lower resolution in general, but they all looked right. fine. Even going down know? to like 640 by 480 and the like, and like we, it still looks good. We even did like integer scaled 320 resolutions, and I still thought like, oh, well, the HUD still looks good though. Like, yeah, so yeah. You, we played older games too uh, that were like sub 640 by 400 and all these things. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was just, just generally a pleasing experience no matter what resolution Well, you say yeah. scaling, but that's so... Uh, so much <laughs> yeah. engineering effort is poured into yeah. modern games today to get to handle the conversion from a, a lower resolution to a higher resolution. Mm -hmm. The only reason that like channels like us and anywhere else talks like, oh, we want to hit that native resolution, <laughs> it's only important really because of that, that, flat panels. It's this flaw of needing to upscale. You only have to upscale because you're if you're you know if you have a 4K screen and you're running at anything other than 4K you're going to be upscaling right yeah and if the resolution isn't an even scale or using linear filtering that blurs the image the pixels become blurred yeah whereas in the CRT uh, you end up with like these when you go real low you end up with natural looking scan lines that are quite small on a PC monitor yeah that they decrease did. as you increase the resolution yeah they're practically invisible at the like I would say like beyond the 1280 by 800 kind of area yeah, once you area, get over that get, get, get over disappear. that um the, this, what's the actually diagonal length of this monitor it's, right here uh 24 inches 20, yeah it's, which is actually pretty great for a crt of course mm -hmm. um 
that's when you didn't really notice them anymore. But for obviously games that were below that resolution, they were kind of designed with them in mind almost. And also right. with like the, the way blacks are represented on a CRT, they were kind of designed with that also in mind. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. exactly. The, uh, yeah, there's a lot, like, like there's so much to lay out here. So first of all, before we move away from the resolution talk, one of the things I think, I liked the comment you made, like yeah. viewing, so when we were playing at 1920 by 1200, mm -hmm. we were kind of joking, like, who needs 4K, right? Yeah, we did say that. And part of the reason <laughs> is, uh, like, especially with Metro, yeah. Exodus, where it's like, it looks like you're looking through a lens, like, yeah. a, like a piece of glass, instead of a digital display. Like, the details on uh, yeah, Artyom's um, uh, hand and everything. Like, watch. Like, even at that lower resolution, it didn't look like you were looking at a pixel resolution anymore. It no. just looks like you were looking through an analog lens and just seeing, like, the super clean, super sharp, yeah. but free of any aliasing and digital artifacts. Yeah, like, it looks so good. TAA plus a CRT is really impressive looking, much more so than I would say it actually looks on a flat panel display. Obviously, you would still see like pixel crawl things. Like sure. you can't get rid of that no matter what you exactly. do. But the way it also a CRT renders pixels, it softens them to a certain degree that is very generally pleasing to the eye. And exactly. If you look at them under like a microscope or like a fine thing, you'll see that like the way those like phosphors line up, there's like a soft fall off of colors in a mm -hmm. way that's different than the very harsh subpixels of an LCD grid. And a, and a game like that too, it just also kind of really fit the aesthetic too. It never looked jarring or anything like that. Whereas and it's it important to note that, you know, we see a lot of work being done on CRT shaders for emulators and stuff to mimic the look of like an old, like a, uh, not a Trinitron, but like a shadow mask tube. Mm -hmm. And those are amazing right now. But what nobody is doing is looking at how can we like achieve the effect of what a CRT looks like in high resolution. Mm -hmm. A high resolution CRT still also has a very different look Aesthetic. than a flat panel. Yeah. And that's not something I think we could easily do with the current pixel counts on a modern screen. I mean, it's I, just a look to it that's really unique. I guess there's probably some weird way to do it where you would take like a, a downscaled image and you'd have one pixel be made of four pixels and it would be like filtered in a certain way or something like that to achieve something similar looking like it. But at the same time, there was nothing that was that looks like that, and it looked really great. And the, the advantages of having being able to play at a pleasing-looking lower resolution all come into the performance angle, where we were playing Metro at you know like what 85 hertz or yeah, something like we, that. We, yeah, we were at 85. Yeah, hertz. but we were CPU limited in that one scene. Yeah, that's why CPU we turned it down limited. for a second. Right. <laughs> um, but like, you can play all these modern games with their effects cranked up at a lower resolution that still looks pleasing. I think a great example is Quake 2 RTX. Yeah, where right? we opted, so we were playing oh at 1920 by 1200 at 95 frames per yeah. second, and that's great. And then yeah. we're like, all right, let's try 120 frames per second at 1280 by 800. That still looked amazing. But then we were like, let's drop it to 640. No, we, we did like 848 by 480. Well, it should yeah. have been 853, but yeah. I was using the Sonic Mania calculation because I had made a custom <laughs> res just for that game. So we used that resolution at 160. Yeah. Hertz, uh, and, you know, with the way the CRT works, when you combine that with the denoising of Quake 2 and the TAA, TAA, you almost had this very natural looking motion blur that looks more like what you see with your real eye in real life yeah, as opposed to like a digital display. We, we, I didn't... Because you don't expect to see motion blur on CRT at all. That's no, real, that's no, another discussion, exactly. of course. But we'll get there. Um, when it combines with modern effects, this and Quake Two RTX doesn't even have motion blur. It just has nope. TAA and the denoising. But for some reason, at an extremely high refresh rate, with those frames actually being presented, it almost looks motion blur esque. Yeah, like it was the, amazing the, looking. the it was spinning so hyper blaster was like, oh my god, what what's going on there? I've never um, seen that before. We, that way. we hadn't seen it look that way before because I've never played it at such a high refresh rate and resolu uh, and at those resolutions. Um, but at the same time, the game being that lower res with that kind of the art style, you were focusing more on like the macro lighting aspects, which is what Quake 2 RTX is kind of about. Right, right. Uh, and it just looked, you know, correct. And it does make me lament the fact that we've been, I mean, we do it on the channel too because we're talking about fixed pixel, pixel displays always, but you know, the chase for the higher resolution, yeah, was it not I really feel it's a mistake. I mean, yeah. I will say honestly, straight up, 12, 1920 by 1200 on this monitor looks dramatically better <laughs> than something like 1800p on a 4K display. It looks way better. It just looks better, yeah. usually to the eye. I'll... It's much cleaner, and it serves, like, we're at this point where these resolutions just don't matter as much. No. Like, 
and they used to matter more, but even on a CRT, it's like, well, you bump up the res, you get more fidelity, but it's not like the low res actually looked bad. No, it didn't. There was, I mean, I don't think we had any other case when we were playing where we pumped the resolution down so much that we thought it looked bad. It was more like making trade-offs whether how much responsiveness you want versus how much fidelity. And that's the responsiveness is key. Yeah. Like when, and motion blur, like so, like you played blood at 120 and immediately you get to see that feeling where one, there's no motion blur at all. Like it's just completely smooth no, in a way. So good. And you know, if you're used to retro games on a CRT, you're used to 60 Hertz. But when you jump up to these high refresh rates on a CRT, you combine that with the lightning fast input response. <sighs> it just feels uh, yeah, otherworldly. Like it, it really looks and feels unlike anything else. And it, it really does feel like we've kind of lost something. And I understand it's not not feasible, feasible to manufacture yeah. these anymore and most people wouldn't want them most people aren't sensitive to these things but i do think if we took the average person we did take an average that's person true. we took someone who doesn't know anything about that's these true. things and we put sonic mania running yeah. left to right uh next to the crt and next to a, a good fat panel display at 60 hertz and you can immediately they even said like oh wow you know that does that's all blurry when you move the, right. the checkerboard pattern there that's you know? actually a good point yeah someone some, did see that we, yeah. we had somebody here that was wondering like why the heck would you want this big old chunky monitor so i loaded up a side scrolling game which has a lot of that motion uh you mm -hmm. know and put it mirrored the displays both 60 hertz uh and it's a, so obvious just how different <laughs> they are like the way they natively handle 60 hertz it's night and day i uh, Speaking of things, like the one thing that I really enjoyed was you, obviously the, Nvi the NVIDIA control panel is something else, oh, but yeah. you creating custom resolutions that worked. And even though they were like very odd, they all yeah. worked and looked good. You, you can go out of spec on these monitors. Yeah. You, just, you can just like, like that's what I was doing with Sonic Mania where I wanted to get the exact pixel resolution, but like a little bit higher. And then I mm -hmm. applied the in-game CRT filter and it ends up looking like a real PVM yeah. like on this thing, but in widescreen. So but you <laughs> yeah. can just like randomly pick whatever pixel, re you know, pixel resolution you want. Mm -hmm. You can put that in, fine. You just start playing around with the refresh rates and all the settings and you just get up with these banana resolutions yeah. that, that don't, it wouldn't necessarily work anywhere else, but you can just play with it and dial it in. We also played a bit of Sigil, uh, you know, uh, John, John Romero, uh, you know, Doom episode. And it was one a great game that I'll have to talk about probably at some point in the future. But yeah, uh, seeing that, which is using a port conversion through GZ Doom, so it's modern OpenGL, and it has all those advantages in terms of per performance, uh, you know, better than old Doom, which was 35 FPS. Also, at its proper, you know, aspect ratio with the proper kind of black levels that Doom kind of requires, it looked like I hadn't seen Doom that way since the mid 2000s and i had always been seeing it on a flat panel where it almost looks kind of cartoony i was i forgot how dark doom was actually yeah. for so long as a result of that i don't play on an oled obviously um, well that's the thing though even on the oled i found so the thing about modern displays is they're very very bright yeah but they don't necessarily do uh dark scenes that well in terms of making it feel dark like in a crt if you push down the brightness below the point where it's even like should be oh, calibrated I know what you're talking about. It, yeah it doesn't like ruin the intensity of like brighter areas, but it does bring down the overall darkness in a way that's very pleasing and makes it look very rich. Yeah. So like there's a low luminance from it that's really good for dark games. And even if you like turn down the backlight in the LCD or the OLED light, and even if you have infinite blacks of the OLED, it still doesn't give you that same mood. Like it really conveys something that's different. Like dark games feel dark in yeah. a way they haven't on any other display. Like Doom 3, Doom 64. These are all games that I. I mean, Everything, when, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play them again as soon as I get a CRT. I don't know how and when, but Thief that's was something. a good one for that. Oh, Thief, my yeah. guess, yeah. There's... Just thing, just, and I re I came to this realization yesterday. Like, I kind of stopped being a hardcore PC gamer <laughs> when I gave up my CRT. When I yeah. moved to LCD, that is the moment. Yeah. Back, like, I stopped playing primarily mouse and keyboard PC gaming because of that. I didn't like LCD was such a downgrade for me. Like it's really pushed me away from wanting to PC game. It just didn't feel the same. It's uh, well, it's a tweaker's paradise, I think, because the, you can't actually be completely unsatisfied with different resolutions, which is something. So, like, instead of going into the settings to tweak your game to perfection, yeah. what you can do is tweak your monitor. Then, at that point, tweak the output to find what frequency and what kind of resolution you find appropriate for the fidelity you want to achieve. Instead of always going into the settings. Uh, 
that's a different thing that we don't do at all with fixed panel displays, even that's ones right. that have different modes. Like my fixed panel display has a 1440p 120 mode and Which a 1080p cool. 120 mode, but they also still don't look necessarily right, by no. the way, with regards to how they display the pixels. They still look have like a little fuzz to them because uh, they're not integer or all these things. And, ah, and I, this yeah. also sounds like if you if you haven't seen this with your own eyes, it sounds like we're crazy. <laughs> but I am a little bit crazy. There's I know. No, I'm, I'm going insane. I'm, I'm totally all about it now. But you see uh, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now. And also one thing was, you know, playing old games that were designed around, you know, non I would say non 60 uh, refresh rates or divisible integers That's of good point. 60, you know, playing, we played Shadow Warrior the other day, which is Dark Forces, Dark Forces, which I hadn't seen at all on a CRT, I think since the nineties and that looked incredible. And also it was, you know, doing proper like 70, right? Yeah. The problem with a lot of these DOS games and why DOS box is often not the best for these, it's not a fault of DOS box. It's yeah. a fault. These games often use different screen resolutions and re refresh rates. 70 Hertz is super common in DOS. Yeah. And most people are using 60 Hertz displays or 120 or like refresh rates where 70 Hertz doesn't necessarily fit in quite right. Yeah. And so getting that, I mean, I guess theoretically, if you could somehow present using G-Sync, it would work. achieve that. I don't know how well that works with DOSBox. G-Sync presentation. That might be the only way. G-Sync presentation would work, but if it's obviously, uh, depends on how the G-Sync is set up. It could lead to frame doubling uh, artifacts if right. it's below the threshold or- But that's already a small subset of that's, monitors. That's a small subset of and monitors. That may not too. even work. But the so, idea is that, and this isn't for all the modern players, but if you're doing retro PC gaming, you need one of these because it's the, like it just, it looks better mm -hmm. and it runs correctly. And like looking at something like Shadow Warrior, for instance, like that's, there's a source port on Steam, mm -hmm. which is awful, I think. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. run correctly. It's very uh, jittery. I've never found a solution. It just doesn't work yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, and then if you play the DOSBox version, again, you run into that same mismatch of refresh rates and you yeah. end up with a very jerky looking experience again. But when you play it on on this thing, it looks so buttery smooth and just like seems right. One another thing that I did kind of notice too is we played Turok, uh, which was originally 30 FPS. Right. Uh, you can unlock it, but that's a whole other story. Uh, at 30, I would say 30 FPS games benefit a lot less from the CRT in general. Oh yeah, um, for but sure. But they still don't have the problem of frame doubling which a CRT doesn't really seem to have. I didn't really notice no, it. No, you don't get frame doubling. You don't get CRT. frame doubling if you're half through refresh rate or something like that, yeah, something you, that happens. It, the CRT natively does it. Whatever refresh rate, or even if even if we were at 60 hertz, like there's no doubling effect per no, se. No. Like it, it just behaves differently and yeah. it looks different. Uh, so I mean, you do see the gaps, obviously. At you the see the gaps rate, in the frames, obviously. No, that's nothing you nothing can do about that. that, but it handles it very well. And I guess uh, another thing to talk about too is we're talking about gaps between frames. We also played some modern games that have per object motion blur uh, and things like that. We played Doom 2016, obviously, and also uh, Metro Exodus. Those effects look really pleasing. They look there. really great. Um, Again, it feels, <laughs> it feels more analog, like you're looking through a camera yeah, lens, but I, in a good way. Like it, it, it's the difference between digital display and a camera lens. I yeah. Think. And it's, somehow it really, like, we still need to try Crisis. We still have to try, try Crisis. That'll, that'll be probably 60. We'll, we'll try it. I mean, we'll try some other higher. And then another there. another point that we uh, Richard suggested and we looked at was... Um, oh, yes. We, we plugged in an original Xbox One, yeah. well, the Xbox One S, uh, and a display like this overcomes a lot of its limitations. Like, yeah. if you just set the Xbox to 720p, you get a beautiful looking it's, picture yeah and a lot of games are down sampled anyway so you get this very clean very sharp image and i might say like i'd rather play the xbox one s on a crt than the base ps4 on an lcd yeah and the obviously good. base ps4 would be even better than the xbox <laughs> and the crt as well. but you see what i'm saying yeah like, it does help clean up the presentation i mean but obviously that like for those games that are like higher refresh rate it'll, it'll definitely help them out and the xbox yeah. is a machine that is not going to be putting out a lot of 1080p always necessarily in exactly. a lot of titles. And that's um, the point is you don't, if you set your system to a lower res, uh, it actually ends up looking more pleasing than if you let the system handle upscaling. Yes, my goodness. You get rid of that linear upscale blur. Yeah, yeah. And I guess there, there's, you know, things that we'll probably talk about in future videos because I kind of want to get a CRT now and I think we should talk about them more. Uh, but in general, like 
Once you see it, it's hard to go back if you've ever haven't seen one in a long time. Later in the day, we John showed me Death Stranding on his 4K OLED. Beautiful pixels, but at the same time, the motion response was completely different. The uh, games just feel very, very different yeah. on there, and it's just it really loses something. Yeah. So that's how it is. <laughs> Not to make anyone so sad in the audience that they don't have a CRT anymore, but I don't know. It's it's a crazy <laughs> thing, and maybe we are crazy, but. We're like in pursuit of this pixel perfection. There's, this, there's something about it. And just, <laughs> this this thing completely like I've been using CRTs for retro gaming for a long time, but I haven't really dived into the world of PC games and like this. And in the last six months since I've jumped into this, mm -hmm. I've played more like mouse and keyboard PC games than I have in like the last five years. Yeah, I mean, and I'm really loving it. Like I'm feeling it again. It brings me back to actually when I loved PC gaming like primarily. It just feels right. And I feel like in the way that you have Smash Brothers players that lug around CRTs and GameCubes yeah. because they want to play at their best, I feel like hardcore PC gamers should, should really, consider really consider a CRT. looking at these. Like even though, yes, you do give up some size, but that kind of disappears really quickly, I find. Yeah. Like you adjust to size. Like a large TV starts to feel small after a while and a small TV starts to feel large enough. Like. It's, I mean, I've noticed that, like, I have no troubles going between the 20-inch PVM and a 65-inch OLED. Yeah, it is surprising that that it isn't kind of like a niche in the, the PC gaming space to have one necessarily. Uh, I guess I'm sure the, there's still people out there that, least, yeah. that have held on to this for a long time, I, and it, respect to those people. Yeah, cool stuff. <laughs> I guess the only thing that's missing from them, at least from technical support, would be variable refresh, but I guess... Yeah. So we've learned that it is possible to do variable refresh on some CRTs. Yeah, yeah. Just, it seems... It's kind of a hack it kind of takes up i haven't done it yet and actually that's kind of another good point these things are not for the faint of heart if you want to do it right mm -hmm. so like for this monitor i actually ended up getting an eye display pro and using windos which was a pain to set up <laughs> and i did a, a full calibration it took an hour to do it uh in a pitch black room with this monitor but I managed to dial in the settings that sounds flawlessly, nice, you know, really really good i like doing i mean the I thing is though is like this is, if you really want to get that top quality image, and you don't need to do that. A normal consumer CRT, they can look great right out of the box, but like if you really want to tweak and play with it and get the most out of it, like it's really like a fun hobby project in a way, and like you can really get amazing results. Yeah, I, I mean, one thing, I guess, also in terms of things that you have to consider, like how dark your room is, uh, a modern backlit LED will be really bright, so it can contend with like, you seeing reflections of yeah, the windows. You'll, you'll want, yeah, you'll want these are dark... designed for gaming in dark rooms, is yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. If you're in a very lit room with the sunlight pouring in, uh, especially these more professional monitors, they typically don't have like the dark like filter. tinting yeah. and filter. So like they literally like absorb light. Yeah. It kind of ruins the black level. There was so one time really you, you, there was one time you like jokingly put on a red light while we were playing Doom, and we could see like the red yep. light infesting the, the image from the you know, like the like I don't know. It looked very different. It's very when you interesting. Turned on ambient lighting. So there's that to consider. Also the adapter side. A lot of people asked about those. Um, so I need to post a link maybe or within the video or in the description here, but what I'm using for my main PC is actually a USB-C to VGA adapter. That's new. I plug it into the RTX 2080 Ti, and with this adapter, I'm able to do, max out what this monitor can support, which is like 1536p or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but every resolution from that down and every refresh rate, I can push it as far as I want in every direction, and it never has dropouts, never misbehaves, it's perfect. And yeah. I say that because I came, I did test some HDMI to VGA adapters and a ton of those had bandwidth issues. We also saw the Xbox would, a little Also weirdness. the Xbox acted weird. So HDMI adapters, the jury's still a little bit out on those and they're a little bit sensitive. Mm -hmm. The Xbox is the only one that's acted occasionally weird. PS4, PS3, yeah. all of them have been fine switch. I'm, I'm curious actually if we do load up like the Crisis games, with since it's going USB 3 out, if it'll have the 20 hertz, 24 hertz we'll, bug. We'll have to sample. We'll have to sample I don't that. think it did. I don't think it will. We'll try that after this and, you know, maybe we'll discuss that. After. We missed that. I can't believe <laughs> it's been busy times. We've done a lot. Yeah, yeah. But either way, I think at this point, you know, you get the idea of, you know, yeah. I've been rambling about it. Richard's rambled about it some. And now, Alex, I mean, we, I mean, let me hear your final thoughts here. Like, um, you know, I switched over to LCDs in 2008. It was a mistake. 
<laughs> and I kind of am craving a CRT. That's how it is. Yeah. And I feel like with your large desk, you could almost pull it off. Just keep it off to the side. Yeah. And, you know, right. when you want to do that, just pull it up. Yeah, I know. Like have it always over here as an off monitor. Not on, by the way, because they obviously take up a ton of... Uh, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's going to be doable. The question is how price, how much price am I, you know? That's actually money. the good news, right? Yeah. Like most CRTs, consumer... If you go find a Sony Trinitron, for instance, like just a consumer one, they typically produce a great image, especially the later generation mm -hmm. ones, like the one I have upstairs. I got that one for like 10 bucks. Yeah. And most, of, and if you're searching on sites to try to find these, you want to look for just like computer monitors and then sort by very low price because the people selling these often don't even understand. They don't put CRT in the description. If you put CRT in the description, yeah, you're you know right. what you have, right? If you don't though, you just say computer monitor. That's a good There's point. a good chance of finding like tons. That's how I, like when I first searched, I found nothing. And I, I, I also, changed my search criteria I did, and all of a sudden there's tons. I did, yeah, like. Uh, and yeah, they're all mostly dirt cheap. I did like eBay ones and I saw like, was putting in like CRT and German phrases for that, for CRTs. And yeah. I was getting really expensive prices where I was like, mm, I don't know about that. Don't need that. You don't no. need to do it. You can get them for like 10 bucks, 10, 20 bucks for a good yeah. Trinitron. Now, obviously, if you want something like the FW900 that we've talked about, that is very expensive and very rare. It's amazing, but it's not a necessity. No. Most of the benefits you get from a CRT, well, pretty much all of them, I'm getting we'll a cheap have, yeah. display anyway. It's not just true of this monitor. Um, the only reason this monitor is really popular is because it does, it's widescreen and it does really higher. high resolutions. So yeah. like when you combine that together, it's a really potent mix. Mm -hmm. And it's also 24 inches is pretty big for a CRT, Yeah. but it also weighs 43 kilos. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that as well. It's starting to hit my weight almost. So, so you, you get, you start to understand the issue here. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's flaws. There's flaws. But they're awesome. But they're awesome. Yeah. And it's really, it's not for everyone, but mm -hmm. I think there's a certain subset of people that watch yeah. EF that really might enjoy these. Retro and gaming and all Retro, these but even modern. Like High there's refresh. an argument for playing this on a modern screen. If you're mm -hmm. thinking, man, I wish I could afford a 120 hertz LCD or something. Or man, I wish I had an RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, just play with a 2060 Super or the AMD equivalent oh. and just play at lower Actually, resolution. Yeah, you know? Exactly. If you like, have a lower end okay. RTX card and you want to enjoy ray tracing, the CRT is the way to get amazing image quality and great, great performance. performance. You yeah. can, you know, we're again blasting Quake 2 RTX at 120 FPS without an issue. Yeah, I with love everything that. cranked up to the max. Yeah. It just feels amazing to play that way. In <laughs> so I think, though, that's probably going to do it for our crazy. Rambling, rambling CRT focused EF <laughs> because what even, what even is this? It's just us talking about CRTs. CRTs and if we'll, you made it this far though. We'll probably talk about them in the future again, of course. Yeah. We have to. And again, we really need to do a more formal video at some point to, to really we Get need to investigate across. more about like the, the different adapters and other recommendations for settings so also that people the best really way to film them too. Like yes. That's another thing. Actually LGR did a really good video on oh, this recently. Yeah. So okay. do check that out. And yeah, CR it's very easy to film a CRT once you understand the settings on your camera. Okay. Then. But, you know, Until I then. think that's going to do it for now. So thanks for joining me, Alex. Of course, John. It's wonderful. And here comes the, the always <laughs> ending. So, of course, you got to like and subscribe because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. Then there's also, what is it? Uh, you have to... There's the uh, notification bell. Yeah, hit that notification bell. Don't hit, hit, hit notification. that notification bell. You know bell. what? Richard does this. I don't say it too often. What? Look at our Patreon page. We yes. provide our videos in a high quality download and also, you know, that's going to be maybe changing in the future. We'll talk about that. Yes. And oh, uh, and Twitter. Twitter. We're on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. <laughs> until next time, this is John and Alex saying Auf Wiedersehen. And um, go buy a CRT. <laughs>